choking It must be catching up your smoking I wish that you never Hannah, Tim, Harry, welcome to The Right Note. Thank you. Welcome hey. back to The Right yeah. Note. Really? Yeah. Wow, I think you, you might be our first return visitors. That's yes. so cool. Veterans. <laughs> Love that. Huge. I think we've just annoyed everyone else. They're like, yeah. Yeah. We're definitely not going back. Yeah. <laughs> and you're here hot on the release of your debut album, Lost Friends. Uh, what was it like when you held that in your hands for the first time? It was so cool. Did we hold the vinyl or the CD first? The vinyl. The vinyl. That was, was awesome. so special. Thanks. Especially because the vinyl's purple. Right. And that's so beautiful. <laughs> but it was very exciting because it's like, if, you know, it's all very conceptual and, you know, making your album and then it simmers for a while and then you, you're holding the physical yeah. thing. It was like, okay, we've really done it. Like, <laughs> here's our body of work. That was like four days ago. We didn't even see one until yeah, like really fresh. The day really? before it came out. Yeah. yeah. What about hearing it for the first time? Like, when was the first time you actually heard the finished product sequenced and it got was, to sit? It was probably like a couple months after we mixed it. So mm. we mixed mm. the record towards the end of last year, and then it was mastered about a month later. So, but I mean, that was it. Was I mean, comparing that to like when we began demoing the record, it was like I don't think I was able to imagine that it would have, we would arrive somewhere mm. like we did sonically right. by, by the end of the whole process. So it was really cool. Mm. Nice. Yeah. When did you get time to work on it? Because you've been busy. You guys had a mm. busy 18 months. Yeah, we kind of, there was a block between two tours where mm. we recorded it in Sydney and around here. Mm -hmm. And then it was like literally, I think Hannah recorded the vocals for the whole album over two days. And then the next day, we left for the states yeah, for a it was tour, so massive. and that's and we mixed it over there. Wow! So it was really like fitting it in, yeah. which it like in some looking back, it's like feels like a bit of a rush, um, but it was also kind of fun, and we just wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. it's like in all these little pockets. You're like, okay, we've got three days here. We'll make a demo. We'll do this yeah. in here, yeah. and then mix in here, and yeah. so it was just like we were trying. We were definitely always looking forward to see when we had these like few days but mm. yeah we managed to do it does it give you a bit of perspective when you when you do get to do it in blocks you kind of get away from it for a little while and then come back to it and get away or is it actually does it work the other way would you prefer just to do it in one big hit i think that thing people talk about where it's like you like all go and you hold up in the studio for like a few months mm. and work on it i think that works really well if you have a few months but i just don't think that bands necessarily have like the budgets to do that anymore yeah. or you know and so it's more like like we were talking to a producer and he was like I don't like to record for longer than two weeks right and it's like well if it's going to be two weeks then what's the chances we're going to have all our best ideas mm. in that two weeks like yeah, we yeah. should have like we should spread it out because we're going to have good ideas and they're going to come to us and that's why we like to do it at home because you know you sometimes at 
1 a.m. an idea will come to you and you'll go, okay, let's do it. Right, mm. and did that happen? Mm. Yeah, like heaps of times. Mm. That's kind of how it works. Like, mm. I think, and I think that if you, can, if you can have that experience in the studio, that's awesome, mm. but it just costs a lot of money to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know you did your EP uh, in your house as well. Yeah. So was it the same sort of setup for the album? Yeah, pretty similar. One thing we got our friend Fan Sarif um, to come away with us to record drums, and mm -hmm. he's a really awesome engineer. And um, he helped us with drums, and he also ran the, the vocal sessions. Mm. But then everything else on the album was recorded at our, at our home. We just bought a bunch of gear and went to town. Right. And so you did all your vocals in two days? Mm-hmm. It was so full on. Yeah. <laughs> because we had, you know, we had a, uh, a session booked before that, but I got sick. Yeah. Right. This is what's so crazy about the voice. It's just, you just have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. And so then we were like, well, we've got two days. And then, just, so we just pumped them out. Right. Mm. That's a lot of pressure. It were was. you looking at the clock? Yes. Big time. <laughs> Yeah. That was yeah. Actually, I would never do that again. I mean, I probably will. That was a traumatizing experience <laughs> it was for so everyone. Stressful. I like, I like came in, I think, for a few hours, and then I was like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah. Fan and I were just like behind the desk, and I was like, that, giving do it again. Trip. I'm like, no. And Tim usually like documents stuff, like with his camera, like video footage of everything, like that we do. But like, yeah. there's like a blank. There's like a black yeah, yeah. gap for that time. <laughs> it's like it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> so. So given that you were fitting in tours around the recording, I mean, are some of the experiences that you had while you were touring, did they kind of feed into the, the album, do you think? Did you hear any of that road work on there? I think you can. Mm. I yeah. think definitely in terms of a lot of the guitar sounds and like it's a lot, because when we made the EP and then mm. people would come to our live show, they would say that our live show sounded a lot more rocky mm -hmm. and bigger than our EP did. And mm -hmm. I think that then when we were touring a lot, in America last year with some big rock bands. Like you can, I think you can hear that a lot more on the album, mm. um, which is probably what we were wanting to do from the outset anyway. But mm -hmm. I think that like, yeah, being on the road and definitely you could feel the different influences. Like a lot of the songs are written like during sound check yeah. at a show, you know? So like there were definitely like songs were coming out from that time. Mm. Mm. Did you learn a lot about yourselves and being a band when you're touring the States so much? Yeah. Yeah, well, we pretty much began touring as soon as we started the band, so I think that it was cool to learn how to just work together and and uh, how to care for each other and, like, how to deal with the pressures on the road, like, while we were writing music and making a record. Mm. Um, mm. It was cool to, like, for it all to be kind of integrated like that. Because mm. um, you, you kind of, it is a very integrated lifestyle, like, you know, you're not, there's no separation between your, like, work life yeah. balance, it doesn't really exist. So you're just trying to like wing it and, um, mm. but doing it with people you're actually like, you know, fond of is like a, a great blessing. Right. Like the so. first tour in America we did was two months and us three shared a room every night. Oh wow. Yeah. So we were like really up in each other's spaces. Yeah, we were really. We were really doing it. <laughs> really doing it. You must learn stuff about each other. What was the biggest surprise that you learned about one of you, sir. <laughs> one of you. Um, Harry's torso. <laughs> it's a beautiful. I like. Thing. I like. I His... sleep. I talk in my sleep. Sometimes. Oh yeah, no, that was right. so funny. Yeah, I remember Harry was Harry was having like this great conversation once in his sleep. I can't actually. He was laughing as well. Yeah, he was like, it was like he was at the pub with friends. Like he was just like, yeah, just like having a chat, and I was like, what's going on over there? He was great. Yeah. And Harry, you mentioned the videos that Tim makes um, of you whenever he has the opportunity. Mm. And there was that one on your Facebook page, which was kind of like a summation of the last two years plus a little bit of the recording. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's a scene in there where you're cutting up a broom and making, oh, yeah. Yeah. making brush, um, yeah. brushes out of it. Is that the kind of ingenuity that you had to sort of do in the studio? It was just like an idea that we had where we wanted a sound <laughs> that wasn't like a, the drumstick sound. It was more like a thwack. Right. Like, and so we just did that, which was really fun. It was yeah. cool. But I think that the idea is you want more, like as much of that kind of thing as possible, like things that you do that mm. are sort of like aesthetic and tactile mm -hmm. and make your sound unique at the same time. Like mm. that's like what you're aiming for. But there were just a few little fun moments like that in okay. the recording process. Yeah, cool. there's even like, I th think it's like, Tim does this, and maybe because we get to be at home and you're like using things all around you, and yeah. like that yeah. was in that house that we rented, like 
you know, there's like some percussive bits on this when Tim has just got a guitar pick and he's just hitting it on the piano and right. he just records it and okay. then like puts it into the song. So yeah. there's like random little things like that all the time. Yeah. Which is a really cool thing that you get from doing it at home or with space when you can just be like, you know, there's so many instruments that like are just on there because it's like, I was like recording, there's like a little melodica sitting mm -hmm. in the room you know, the keyboard that you blow into, and then yeah. it was just there, so you grab it, and so it's kind of cool doing that. Yeah, nice. And you did some work in Iceland as well, is that right? Yeah, yeah. That, that was for a track that didn't end up on the album, but okay. it was, uh, we just did a day at the studio that Sigur Rós started. That's right, um, yeah. With their engineer, Biggie, he was amazing. Oh, and it was so good. That was just really cool. Like, it was just, it was cool to just get some exposure to what it is like. Mm. Even though we didn't end up going into the studio, we had a few experiences in the studio before we recorded. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, like when we were even on the road, to see people who are really experienced doing their work because mm -hmm. they are really at a level of their own. But you can sort of steal stuff from them mm -hmm. and yeah. try, and that's how we learn. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Yeah, nice. And talking about your videos again, I think the, that video on your Facebook page finishes with... Um, there's a sort of dialogue of you talking about it. I think you're talking to a show. You're, mm. you're at a show talking to the crowd about a gig where when you first turned up at that venue, oh, you yeah. thought... Oh, yeah, I had to pay to play. <laughs> right, I, but you don't actually see the footage of that as you're talking about it. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience in terms of what you like? where that gig was that you thought you had to pay oh, to play? Okay. So that was um, our headline show at Oxford Art Factory. Last year, it was like April of last year, we'd just gotten back from an American tour and it was after our EP came out and we played two sold out night sh shows there and they were like so fun. But that venue is so cool because, you know, we've all grown up in Sydney playing at Oxford Art Factory and they've got the gallery bar, you mm -hmm. know, that tiny little room and that was the show I was playing in this girl band and somehow, I can't even remember how we got offered to play a support show. Or so it was like it's some showcase night or something, mm -hmm. and it said just a hundred dollar fee. Yeah. And I, I, but I was, just, I was legitimately like, this is a miracle. Like I can, <laughs> I only have to pay a hundred bucks and I can play there. Like I was like so stoked. And then they gave me a hundred dollars. Wow. That's a two hundred dollar turnaround. Yeah, I know. <laughs> wow, I'm really. That's right. I was on the win. Big night. That was that. so yeah. cool. Right. And then I got like, what did I buy? Hungry Jacks or something with it all. <laughs> So, so when you're on tour in the States or you're on Jimmy Kimmel, do you ever think back to those moments and, and think how far you've come? I mean, I do. Like, I think mm. particularly, yeah, that's actually true when you're in it. It's so overwhelming. Um, but you often, you feel like a kid. Like, I often feel yeah. like a kid and I think that, like, and I think back to myself as a child or whatever, as a, playing the piano or whatever, and it's, it is just so wild that we are where we are or whatever. Because you don't, we, you don't really think that about it. Mm. Yeah, you get there. It's like the types of things that you get to do. It's because it's kind of like we're just a band doing our thing, and like we've got our first album out. We're like a new band, but we're getting to like play some festivals that are really amazing, and we wouldn't have like conceived of that as being part mm. of our lives. Mm. So it's like a real privilege. Like mm. it feels really awesome. It also feels the same though as when like. I did it like in another band. Though. It's mm. like it, there is like a familiarity to it. I think that was good, a cool thing about like touring with other bands. And like I used to be in a band and we'd just like tour the east coast of Australia, which is just like driving between Sydney and Melbourne. Mm. <laughs> and so, and Brisbane, if you really want to go there. <laughs> but and so it's actually been cool to like to feel like you're a bit like, ah, oh, cool, like this is actually, I, I know what to do. Yeah. Mm. And like I can do this. And it's not, you're not just constantly like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've got lots of touring to come. So I wish you the best for all that. Thank you. Thanks, and thank you. thanks again for, for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks. Oh, thanks.
Just say.